bone in, here's the tip of it, that's where I'm going to start measuring. And the 10 inches stops right here. So I'm just going to mark that with my pencil. Okay. And the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to cut that mark with your um, tin snips or your bolt cutters or whatever you have on hand. So make sure you're wearing eye protection at this point because little pieces of metal can go flying when you cut the, the boning. So um, if your hands are a little bit weak like me, <laughs> you can um, brace one side of this against the table and then use your weight to push down from the top. Okay. So as you can see, we now have our bone and it's cut. And now what we need to do is round out these sharp edges because you don't want those poking through your fabric. So, so I have my metal file here and I'm just going to lay it down on the table and I'm going to take the bone and, uh, and rub the sharp point towards me um, on the file like this. And here it is rounded. Now I know when you buy um, pre-cut boning it actually is very very rounded but you don't have to make it as round as possible. All you need to do is um, just blunt these sharp corners here. And do the same for the other side. So now what you need to do is, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the ends of the bones are no longer protected. You can see the actual silver, the metal part of it. Um, showing through. It, it's no longer um, covered with the nylon coating here. So what you need to do is seal that in some way. So one thing you can do, um, my personal favorite way to um, seal that is just to use some Teflon tape. Okay, so this is what Teflon tape looks like. It just comes in a little roll like this. Um, it's also called uh, PTFE tape or plumbing tape or anything like that. Uh, you can find this in any hardware store, even dollar stores. This cost me like 25 cents and has lasted me like two corsets. So it's, uh, it's not a huge investment. It's very light. The tape is very thin. So all you do is pop it open like this. And the tape is very, very thin. It looks like this. Um, it's not sticky, but it sticks to itself quite well. So all I would need really to, to uh, tape one end of the boning is like maybe two or three inches, not even. So I'm just going to cut it. And I'm going to wrap the boning. So start pretty close to one end, like so. Um, leaving a little bit of the tape at the top here so that you can fold it down later. And just uh, wrap it, like roll it a couple of times like so, and fold the, um, the tape down like this to, uh, to cover the, the top of it. Continue rolling and just make sure it's very, very smooth. Um, try to get it at a happy medium point where it's not so close to the top that it's going to slip off, but it's not too close or, um, or too bulky coming down into the boning because that might prevent it from sliding into the boning channel very easily. So that's how you do it. Um, I learned this from Foundations Revealed once again. They're a huge source of information. I highly recommend you go there if you have any questions on making corsets. Another thing you can do is you can actually paint or dip the end of the boning in something to make an airtight seal. So I have known of people using um, plastic dip or plasti dip, um, depending on where you come from, it's called either one. You can find those at hardware stores. And it's kind of the same kind of um, non-stick plastic dip that you can dip your tools into um, to give yourself a, a nice non-slip um, grip on the handles of your tools. I have seen people use um, nail polish, although I'm not entirely sure how well that works. And I have here some Mr. Touch-Up. This is actually used for um, 
more for bathtubs and sinks and other other things with a, a cer ceramic coat on it. But it's specifically made to you know cover metal um, and protect it. So, um, so I would say that it would pretty much work well for the ends of boning since you don't need to use that much of it. And all you need to do is you know paint it on like nail polish. Um, and just make sure it's covered and you want to wait a couple hours for this to dry. Again you want to um, do this in a well ventilated area because it is flammable, um, the fumes are toxic, <laughs> so just make sure that you're working in an appropriate environment. So you can just um, leave this to dry overnight. So once your boning is all prepared and dried and whatnot, all you need to do is slip it into the boning channels. So as you can see, like I said before, um, in this particular corset it's two layers of kuti, so I'm just going to slip it um, into the channel in between these two layers, like so, and feed it through. It goes in quite nicely, quite easily. Make sure you push it right down to the bottom. And what you can do now is you can give it just uh, one or two stitches by hand or by um, or by machine just to keep it snug and in place until you get the binding on. And one thing I would recommend is when you're putting on your binding or if um, you're stitching at all anytime close to your boning, uh, you might want to use a um, zipper foot because it um, it doesn't have like the one uh, metal side to it and you can get a lot closer to the boning without having the foot actually run over it. Again, when you're sewing next to any boning or any type of metal whatsoever, use eye protection because when the needle hits the boning, it may break and it may fly at your face. <laughs> That's not very pleasant. So you don't want that too. So just make sure you use um, appropriate eye protection. Okay, so that's how you make your boning channels and put in your boning. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!